shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Anybody grateful for what the Lord has done? Another chance and another opportunity to give his name glory, give his name honor. We welcome our cyber family, our YouTube, Facebook family, and those that are in person. Amen. Anybody lift your hand and say, God, I thank you for another chance. Oh, come on. Thank you for another opportunity to give your name glory. Amen. We bless you. Come on. We're going to welcome you to the harvest. Amen. Welcome to the harvest. We're glad that you're here. Welcome to the harvest where the spirit of the Lord dwells. Welcome to the harvest where the table is spread. From generation. from generation to generation, we worship, we worship you. Come on. Lord, you are good, say. Lord, you are good and your mercy is yes, Lord. forever. Lord, you are good, say. Lord, you are good Ooh. and your mercy is yeah. forever. Yeah. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good yeah. and your mercy
all the time. Anybody know our God is great and our God. Him. Lift your hands where you are. Come on, elevate your. Feel the. The use of your limbs. But guess what? You made it. <laughs> you got here. He said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. He told us to enter into his. For the Lord is good. So I don't know about you, but we can lift our hands right there. Come on, that's right. Just take a few seconds. Come on. Don't have to go down a road. We don't have to go down the list. You know how good he's been to you. That's all. I hear you. That's right. You know the ways that he's made for you. And we just simply tell him, thank you. Because surely it had not been for him who was on our side. If it was up to the enemy, he would have swallowed us up, y'all. But thanks be to God unto you that giveth us the victory yeah. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. We say thank you, Lord. We take the time to say thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord. Cause I just want to thank you, Lord. Come on, family. Thank you. this time to say thank, thank you, Lord. We just take the time to say thank you, Yeah. Lord. Oh, I see your hands lifted. Come on. I just want to say. I just want to thank you, Lord. Listen, I like it. You've been so can wave your hand and say, Lord, you've been so good to me. You've been, been out of everything. You've still been so good. You've been so good. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good. stop praising him. I discovered he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy to be praised. Hey, I'm excited to be in the house of prayer. 
one more time. Amen. It's good to see all of you in the sanctuary, and it's good to see you all. Amen. Amen. On the um, stream. Amen. We thank God for this Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad there in it. Come on, give God praise one more time. Listen, we're praying. Amen. Um, for Sister Sabrina Cremati. She lost her uncle on the other day. We're also praying for Deacon Riley. He's in the um, um, Veterans um, Hospital, and he lost his cousin in Alabama. He, he's home. Thank you so much. Amen. He, y'all to get out of the shop. Amen. He's home. He's been released, and, and we're praying, amen, for all the sick and shut in. We're praying for um, uh, Brother Johnson, who called Deacon Block and said he wasn't feeling his best. We're just praying, praying, praying. Amen. All those that desire prayer, um, Sister Linda Pla, we're praying, we're praying for all those that desire. How many know the prayers of the righteous are availing much? Amen. And so if you're going to know God, then you have to talk to God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we thank God. Please pray for the bereaved family. Please pray for the sick and shut in. Uh, I don't know everybody by name, but please don't get mad with the preacher. Amen. The preacher turned 50 on Wednesday. I'm getting old, y'all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so don't charge it to my heart. Just charge it to my head. Amen. Listen, we had a good time on last Sunday. Amen. We talked about finishing strong or finish strong. And I'm coming back with finish strong part two. Amen. Finish strong part two. Amen. We salute our deacons, officers, members, and friends. I'm um, also continue to pray for Deacon Adams and, and Brother Adams, Wilbert Adams. They lost um, both of their nephews. Amen. And that's very challenging. Amen. And Deacon Adams not feeling his best as well. So we know prayer will change things. Amen. Judges chapter 7. Y'all should know it. Judges chapter 7. And we salute all of our preachers. Amen. And our musicians and the praise team for doing a marvelous job. Pray for um, Sister um, what? Elder Elaine Nelson, she's on the road. Amen. Pray that she will return safely. Amen. Judges, as we look at um, Finish Strong, part two. Judges chapter seven, verse one, it reads, Then Jerubel, who is Gideon, somebody shout Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Mora in the valley. Somebody shout valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites un into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, my own hand have saved me. Now, therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead, and there return of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remain ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there, and it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee, and of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought them down, brought the people down into the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lap put in their hands to their mouth were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that lap will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thy hand and let the other people go every man unto his place. Seven verses for your consideration. We're going to put it all in context, but we thank God for the readers, the doers, and the hearers of God's blessed word. Amen. You may rest yourselves in the very presence of the Almighty God. I want to share with you, my brothers and sisters, Finish Strong, Part 
2. Last week, Reverend Law, we uh, tapped into a man that had an issue or an infirmity for 38 years. And we discovered, amen, that we ought to realize the delay of seasons. Many of us put too much emphasis on seasons to the point and to the and, and, and until we wait on a certain season to make a certain move. Y'all, y'all mighty quiet. And so it's dangerous because seasons will cause you to delay. It, it will cause you not to be your best, but to be, uh, how can I say this, comfortable in your mess because you're delaying your change for a certain season. We discovered you don't have to wait to, January 1 to lose weight. You can lose weight November 14th. We, we don't have to delay changes, amen, based on seasons. Then we discovered that, you know, if you're going to realize the delay of seasons, we have to recognize the dangers of superstition. Many of us are more superstitious than spiritual. Y'all mighty quiet. They, they, they thought the magic happened in the water. And we learned last week it wasn't in the water. It will always be in God. We learned that God don't have to use a rabbit foot to work a miracle. God don't have to use sage. God don't have to, amen, you don't have to break a mirror and have bad luck for seven years. Just pay your bills on time. Y'all ain't helping me. You, you, you can, you, your foot can be swept by a broom and you can still get a groom. Somebody helping me right there. We're, 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 we're so superstitious. We're, we're, we're in church every Sunday, amen, and, and we, we believe in superstition more than we believe in the spiritual realm. And we discovered that God didn't need the pool or a certain season to heal this man. We also learned that we, 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 we realize or recognize the dangers of superstition. We resist, amen, my third point, we resist the dependency of supporters. Because when the man was asked, who would put, will thou be made whole? You know what he went to? He went to people. He said, I have no man to put me in the pool. I feel like preaching, y'all. Amen. Many of us are so dependent on other people for our deliverance that it delays our deliverance because you around here talking about I have no man. Sometimes it's a blessing not to have a man. Sometimes, y'all missing it. I see y'all y'all frowning. Sometimes it's good, amen, not to have somebody, amen, because some of us depend on people to find deliverance, but when you don't have nobody, you can look to the right somebody. Look at somebody say, sometimes it's good not to have nobody because when God is all you have, you'll realize he's all you need. So we recognize the dangers of, uh, uh, we, we, we realize the delay of seasons, we recognize the dangers of superstitions, and we resist the dependency of supporters. You've got to be very careful who you allow to support you. Because some folk want to support you to control you. I'm just doing a recap. Look at somebody, this is just a recap. That's why I'm very leery of who I borrow money from. I'm very leery of who I, I, I allow to bless me because some folk will only bless you to control you and then they'll throw everything in your face that they did for you. But then I, I, I cut it off too quick because I had one last point. I was talking to Reverend Law. Hey Amen. We had one last point. We talked about recognize the dangers of superstition, resist the dependency of supporters, but we forgot to say rejoice in the deliverance of the Savior. Isn't that pretty preaching? When God do it, you shouldn't mind telling everybody, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? 
that was part one. Here's part two. We find ourselves in Judges chapter 7 with the ma a man named Gideon. Now, to understand chapter 7, you got to go back to chapter 6 of Judges because in chapter 6, it's the backdrop of what's going on in chapter 7. I need to let you know Gideon was called in chapter 6, even though he did the work in chapter 7. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, amen, if God called you, he will equip you. I'm talking to the wrong crowd today. Look at the other neighbor, because the neighbor, that neighbor don't like you. Say, neighbor, if God called me, he will equip me. He was called in chapter 6. Amen. He was called. He was challenged in chapter 6. And everybody, and anybody read chapter 6, you know that, amen, they were in trouble because they refused to obey God. Oh, okay, y'all, y'all, y'all acting funny. Let's go, let's go to chapter six. This is a Bible-based church, isn't it? Amen. Go back to chapter six and read verse one. It says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord, watch this, delivered them into the hand of Midian. Amen. Seven years. Somebody say that's Bible. They got beside themselves, and God will often, y'all not going to like this when I say it, God will often use the enemy to spank us to get us in check. Yeah, he knows how to chastise us. Here, here, we're in the text now. We're in the text. Amen. Israel is in, amen, the authority of the Midianites. Now, God, the one that allowed it to happen, is calling a, 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 a person, amen, to deliver the people. Y'all missed it. God said, I got you in it. Now it's time for me to bring you out. But notice this, Reverend Law. Notice this, Reverend Law. There, there, there's some stuff I want you to see about Gideon in the sixth chapter. I want you to see the anxiety of Gideon, the uh, apprehension of Gideon, and the assumption of Gideon. Preach, black man. Once God called Gideon, are y'all there? I'm in chapter 6. The call of Gideon happened in verse 11. God calls Gideon. And there came an angel of the Lord and said under the oak tree, which was at Ophrah, that, that, that pertained unto Joash, the Abazarite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide from the Midian, Midianites. Y'all see it? The anxiety of Gideon. As we consider the life of Gideon, we discover that he lacked confidence and was filled with anxiety. If you're going to finish strong, you got to get your anxiety under control. Oh, y'all, y'all got. Uh, we too must learn to overcome our anxiety as we trust the Lord to do the impossible in our lives. He can't do the impossible if you think he can't do it. You, you're here struggling, you're here afraid, you're, you, 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 you're anxious, and you're worried about everything, and that's why you think God is not moving your life. No, you got to get your anxiety under control. Yeah, yeah, Gideon was threshing wheat by the wine press to hide from the Midian. Y'all see it? He was hiding. Typically in that day, wheat was thrashed on the threshing floor, a place set aside near the field of the harvest, using an ox to tread out the grain. It is, it is noble that Gideon is working in the harvest at all, but he has been overcome with fear. Somebody shout fear. He isn't using all that is available to him to ensure the harvest. He has bought a small portion of wheat to the wine press and is working in secret, hiding from the Midianites. Sadly, this is the case for many of us today. We come to church and we hide. We have abandoned the harvest, content with the little work around the church, hidden from the world. We have found this is much easier. As long as I could just come to church and hide, I don't have to get in the field where my feelings will be hurt. And sadly, many of y'all feelings get hurt in here. No wonder you're not going out there because if you can't handle the household of faith, how are you going to handle the unbelievers? If the household of faith, amen, get on your nerves and hurt your feelings and y'all ain't helping me, make you feel insignificant, no wonder you're not evangelizing the world. You want to hide like Gideon. 
Y'all don't have to holler back. Look at your neighbor and say, stop hiding, stop hiding, stop hiding. All I want to do is go to church and get a word. That's all I want to do. I want to get there exactly when the praise team stops singing because all I want to do is get a word. I don't want to talk to nobody. I don't want to talk to my neighbor. I don't want to high-five my neighbor. I don't want to bump my neighbor. I don't want to nudge my neighbor. I don't want to fellowship my neighbor. All I want to do is come hide and get me a word. That's why when church over, I can hear tires. Because all I want to do, Leo, is come get a word. I don't want to. I don't want to build relationships. I don't want to break bread with these folk in this church. I want to hide. And then after I hide, I want to ride. We may see a little grain brought in to the storehouse, but much of the harvest remains in the field. You will likely be attacked while working in the field, but we must labor for the harvest. I'm glad somebody endured the difficulties to labor for my soul. I'm glad somebody didn't care about what other folk think or thought and knew my soul was important enough to tell me about Jesus. I'm glad somebody one hooked on themselves that they can, y'all ain't helping me, that they cannot hide and, and tell me in the line at Walgreens or Walmart or Target, there's somebody that died for everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of y'all don't even want to tell folk what church you go to. He says in the verse 12 or the sixth verse, he said, he said, the Lord is with thee. Are y'all hearing me? Now, Gideon had a problem with that. And some of y'all subscribe to this same theology that Gideon has. God called Gideon. Matter of fact, he called him a mighty man of valor. Am I right about it? Lord, help me to see me the way you see me. Boy, yeah. preach black man. Yeah. See, 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 some of y'all caught up in how you see yourself. But it matters not how you see you. But I thank God he sees me differently than I see me. Because when God told Gideon, I'm going to use you to do it. Here's Gideon apprehension. Gideon said unto the Lord, if you be with me, uh, can I paraphrase? Well, let me read it so y'all won't think I'm making it up. And Gideon said unto him, O Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all of this befallen us? And, what, and where be all his miracles which he's done for our father? Our, fa our fathers told us of all these miracles, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Upon hearing the call of God, Gideon began to question whether he was worthy enough of the task after being called a mighty man of valor. Y'all missed it. He said, he said, God, if you with me and if you've been with us, why we're going through what we're going through. I come by to help somebody today just because you're going through some stuff don't mean God ain't in it. You can sit there like a bump on a log all you want to. Some people think God ain't in it if it don't go well. Maybe it's not going well because God is in it and he's trying to test your commitment. I know I wouldn't get too many. If God was at New Harbor, there wouldn't be so many issues. Maybe he's here, but the issue is you. We can't be a better we until I become a better me. We want everybody else to be better, but we want to remain the same. Uh, I got you. God got you right where he wants you. Gideon saying, there's no way you could be with us. And you let this stuff go on. 
that's, you know, that's, you know, God calls you, but he don't make the pathway smooth or easy. And you think, well, maybe something ain't right. No, it's right. It's right because God don't want cowards. He wants some folk with some courage. He wants some folk like the lady, amen, that brought her daughter to Jesus, and he said it's not meant for the dogs. And the lady, he, she, she maintained her equilibrium and said, that's all right. I'll be a dog today, but I still come from my deliverance. Give me the crumb that falls from the master table. He complains. Uh-oh, y'all not going to like this. We, we, we talk about his anxiety. We see his apprehension. He complains about the situation Israel is facing. If God hasn't forsaken us, why has all this come upon us? Y'all don't act like he's by himself. Why hasn't God performed a mighty miracle and taken care of the median nice? Gideon seemed resigned to the fact that the suffering they face will never improve. The devil is a liar. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, but you can finish strong even in this season. Neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, but don't you give up. Don't you give out. Don't think this is the end. Amen. The best is yet. Who, let me come over here. The best is yet to come. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, neither have it entered to the heart of man what God has in store for you if you keep the faith. Satan would have us all to believe that God has abandoned us. He wants us to believe our efforts will make no difference. God is sovereign, and he can do all things. But he desires us to be workers in the harvest. We cannot assume that things will never be any better. Because once you assume it's not going to be better, the devil has convinced you it won't be better. I wish I had somebody in here look at your neighbor and say, you know what we learn about the word assume. I'm not going to say it because I'm trying to be more spiritual. If you and I are not willing to stand for the Lord and try to make a difference. Who will? Brother Shelton, Esther was told, if you don't do it, I'll go around you, and it's going to get done. I'm trying to use you, but don't thank you all I need. Y'all got quiet, man. Some of y'all think if you leave the church, it's going to fall apart. It may get better. I ain't scared of none of y'all. I'm 50 on Wednesday. Try it. We got to get over ourselves. It ain't about us, but it's all about God. Gideon's apprehension, he talking about what, but God, if you was... If you was with us, we wouldn't be going through this mess. I can tell you that it isn't God's will for men to die lost. He came for whosoever will. He wants none to perish. Man has brought much upon himself. Oh, oh, oh y'all don't like this kind of preaching. I, I didn't even bring a towel guy. I didn't think I was going to sweat, but y'all don't like this. Some stuff, if the truth be told, we bought it upon ourselves. We're blaming everybody for what we bought on ourselves. I'm not even in the body yet. I'm still in the introduction. We, we blame everybody for the situations we're in. Man has brought much upon himself, but that isn't what the Lord desires. There is hope as long as we live in the days of grace. We see Gideon's anxiety, the anxiety of Gideon, the apprehension of Gideon. I'm still in verse 6. I ain't getting verse 7 yet. The assumption of Gideon. And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Who, who am I to say, behold, my family is poor, and I am the least in my father's house. Not only my kinfolk are poor. 
but I'm at the back of the line in that family. I wish I had some Bible readers today. God, you're going to use me. I got a bad family, and I'm in a bad place. I got a bad family, and I'm in a bad position. I'm not even first in a bad family. Boy, I wish I had some time on the clock. It's bad to be in a bad family and then be the least of the bad family. That's really bad. I'm not even the pick of the litter in my family. Somebody think about that thing. I see y'all, that, 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 that mind just. I'm not even my mother's favorite. I'm going to say it again. I'm not even my mother's or father's favorite. They don't even call me first, but you calling me. Boy, that's why I like God, because people may not call you, but we got a God that can look beyond our faults and see our needs. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you better get, you better get off of what people think of you and how people value you. Amen. Well, what God says about you is what really matters. Can I go back round the merry-go-round, look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, you didn't qualify me, so you can't disqualify me. My mama may not like me, but the master do. Y'all better, y'all better let this parenting issue go. You're too grown to be worried about mom and daddy. I'm going to say it slower. You're too, I'm trying to be spiritual because I want to put a D word there. You're too grown <laughs> to be worrying about what mama did or didn't do or what daddy did and didn't do. That's beyond, that's behind you. You got to get past the past. Gideon say, he brings up his family. I ain't nobody because they ain't nobody. And I'm, at the, I'm the least of the nobodies. He begins to tell the Lord, watch this, about his inability in regard to his heritage. I don't care who my mom and daddy is. That don't mean I got to be like them. Y'all don't like me today. Because it's not in my heritage. It's in my faith in God. Surely the Lord has made a mistake. God, you got to be making a mistake picking me. You want me to be a leader? Born in the projects? Scott projects? Born in the ghetto, raised in the hood? And you want people to call me reverend, pastor? Yes, I do. Look at somebody says, it's not where you're born. Y'all ain't helping me. It's not how you start, but it's how, who am I preaching to today? Y'all ain't look at nobody yet. Look at somebody say, it's not how you start, but it's how you finish, baby. So we see his anxiety. We see his apprehension. We see his assumption. He believed, he believed, he believed that he wasn't good enough to work for God. The devil is a liar. God can use whomever he wants to use. I know some of y'all. Amen. Our historians, y'all got everybody passed, locked, locked, locked down and wrote down in some black book. But you better throw that book away, baby, because what God has for me is for me. I know some of you are deep sea divers. You go diving down in the deep to dig up somebody past. But what God has for me, it is for me. And you wasting all that time doing all that research, doing all that investigation. And you forgot this one scripture. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and be Behold, all things are new. You can have my junk, but I let my junk go. Look at your neighbor and say, it's yours now because I let that go years ago. He 
told me, he told me in his word to shake some stuff off. Here you are picking some stuff up that I shook off. Let's get, I got 15 minutes. Let's get the verse. I just, I had to, I had to give you the backdrop. He, he had, he had anxiety. He had apprehension. He had assumptions. We assume too much. Some of us have this, I call it a paranoid spirit. You don't know the truth, but you're going to assume that you know when you don't even know you don't know. But because you are paranoid, the devil will put things in your view to allow you to make assumptions. That's why you can believe a lie with no investigation and reject the truth in the Bible with documentation. People that assume don't need facts. It just sounds like something he or she would do. Y'all know I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. Look at somebody, touch three people and say, stop assuming. The first thing I want to talk about, my brothers and sisters, in verse chapter 7, I want to talk about the power of fortitude. In my introduction in the last sermon, I gave you three words that if you're going to finish strong, you're going to have faith, you got to have focus, you got to have fortitude. In the text, I like the power of fortitude. Y'all don't see it yet, but I'm, I'm preaching. I told you, I'm preaching things a little different now. I go to the same area, but preaching a little different. Many times, people preach this text, and they focus on the negative. But we're going to focus on the positive. Somebody say the power of fortitude. Let me, let me get you up to date now. Here we have, amen, a battle that's about to take place. Israel have 32,000 troops. Did y'all hear me? Sounds like a great number. Israel has 32,000 troops. When I tell y'all this, y'all going to like, oh, no. The other side, the Midianites, have 135,000. Leo, the only one got it. I'm, I'm confused because if I'm already outnumbered, you trying to downsize again? They already got me by a hundred and some thousand. And God, somebody got it, somebody got it. They already got me by a hundred thousand. And now in the text, God, I, I, I received a call. I was apprehensive. Amen. I was anxious, and I, I had assumptions. But now I took up your call, and now you're telling me to sh cut some troops. Y'all can sit there. Y'all know how Gideon him must feel. Come on. I already counted the enemy. The enemy have 135,000. God, I only have 32,000. And you're telling me. Whoever is scared, fretful, and fearful, tell them they can go home. I keep trying to tell you, just because they're standing with you don't mean they're with you. Here's my favorite one here, Sweet Kim. Just because you can count them don't mean you can count on them. I'm about to preach myself happy. Don't get caught up in numbers. Because when God said those that are afraid, those that are fearful, those that are faint in their heart, they have a pass to go home. There are some people in our lives just waiting on us to say it's okay if you leave. Oh, I got to stay there. I got, oh, the Holy Spirit. There are some folk that really don't want to be with you. But they want you to release them because they too coward to leave you on their own. Because they don't want to be the bad guy. So if you tell me I can go, then I can. And then they be, they be playing on these games. You can leave. But baby, I really don't. But they won't leave. Well, I mean, if you really want me to, but I really don't want to.
Let me stop meddling. He said, the fearful and the fretful and the faint at heart, they can go back home if they really don't want to go. And y'all know what happened? Y'all know what happened? 10,000 people went home. But we're not going to focus on the 10,000 that went home. We're going to focus on the 22,000 that stayed. That's the power of fortitude. See, I just swung that thing around. Some of us only focus on the people that leave us and never value the people that stay. I feel an anointing in this place. Look at your neighbor and say, stop focusing on the people that left and love the ones that stay. Because you're going to break the hearts of the ones that stay, always whining and complaining about the ones that left. They're going to say, what am I, job liver? Woo! Touch somebody and say, I'm glad they stayed. I'm glad they stayed. I'm not even worried about the ones that left because the ones that left wasn't meant for me anyway. I wish I had somebody that could stand up and say, thank God for the ones that left, but I thank God more for the ones that stayed. And they stayed and didn't have to stay. That's the power of fortitude. Fortitude is the mental Hear me and hear me well. Fortitude is the mental and physical strength under pressure. I thank God for those that had the mental and physical strength to hang on in there. Oh, y'all, y'all might cry. Maybe you sitting by somebody that hung, hung on in there. Look at them and say, I thank you for staying. Had the mental and the physical fortitude. That's one thing I don't like if somebody's standing with me always saying they're going to leave. Because now you're giving me an insight of your heart. Every couple I counsel, I'd say always stay away from, I'm going to get a divorce. Do not weaponize divorce. Do not weaponize separation. Do not weaponize you leaving. Because one day, your feelings going to be hurt. They're going to say, bye-bye. Then you're going to flip around and say, I know you didn't want me, Negro. You told me you didn't want me. Several times. But now I agree and say bye-bye. Now your feelings hurt. Nudge your neighbor and say, be careful what come out that mouth. That's why fortitude, there's power in fortitude. People may get on your nerves, amen. Your relationship may get on your nerves. This church may get on your nerves. But when you have physical and mental fortitude, amen, you're not going to deal with what get on your nerves. You're going to focus on some pure things, some honest things, some things of good report. Think on these things because whatever you think on, whatever you focus on will determine how you feel. Some of us, this is my segue, focus on the wrong thing. That, that's my se- the power of fortitude. But look at, oh man, I got six minutes left. Look at the power. Somebody say, take my time. That's what I like. The power of focus. Once we move from the power of fortitude, look at the power of focus. Gideon is saying, now listen, I was already down over 100,000. You told me to cut. I cut. 10,000 went home. And God, you still ain't happy. Okay, y'all. y'all. He, he says here in chapter 4, And the Lord said unto Gideon, I got to be a Bible man, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water. Wait a minute. Why are they too many? And I just lost 10,000. And the other people got 135,000. 
thousand. And God is saying, no, take them down to the water. And the ones that lap like a dog, put them to the side. And the ones that just, they, they, they look, they look at you. Hmm? Y'all, 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 y'all mighty crying. And the ones that get all comfortable, get down on their knees, get all, get, want well, well, luxury, put them to the side. Here's, here's the power of focus, my brothers and sisters. The one took the water in their hand and lapped it like a dog. Put them over there. The ones that got to get all down, relax. They're like they're going to be there forever. Don't get ahead of me, real. Put them to the side. 300 was focused. Y'all, y'all missed it. The power of focus. See, we let, we let luxury lure us. But if I was sitting with y'all sitting, I'd say, that's some pretty preach. When we're focused on luxury, it lures us from being focused on the right thing. He said, you don't need, you don't need those. I'm going with the 300. Y'all missed it. 300 focused people will take you further than 22,000. People worrying about how their hair look. And we going to war. Now let me, let me amend that because I don't want y'all to think I'm saying you come out the house any kind of, I'm not saying that. I'm talking about care about your hair when you're in the middle of worship and warfare. Okay, okay. Can I teach it? When you really in here concerned about your deliverance and that Holy Ghost get on you, you don't care about your wig. You don't care about your weave. You don't care about your eyelashes. And if you're like me, you don't care about boogers and snot. I'm going to get what I come for if I got to be ugly to get it. How you shouting all pretty? Y'all don't like your preacher today. When you come for deliverance, when you in the middle of warfare, it ain't time to be comfortable and cute. It's time to be courageous so you can conquer. Ain't time to be distracted. That's why I, I, I notice the ones that are serious about warfare, because when I'm preaching, I can see who's really being attentive, and I can see who's being, who's distracted. Y'all can go home all day and watch Netflix and don't go to the bathroom one time, but here y'all, y'all the bathroom 10, 20 times. One sermon. One sermon, 20 minutes. You don't use the bathroom 40 times. But, 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 but when you're watching Netflix and you, y'all ain't helping me going from series to series and you, y'all ain't helping me. You, you, you hold it just to get through the next episode. Look at your neighbor and say, you be holding it trying to get to the end of the episode. Boy, I can't wait to the end of this. I got to use the battle. But you can't wait to the end of this. Because this is not important. The power of focus. Those that are drinking water, but they looking. 
They looking because guess what? The enemy ain't going to come when you think he going to come. The enemy may sneak up on you, so you got to be alert and ready. Look at somebody. So you got to be alert and ready for when the enemy come. If you're going to finish strong in the end, in the, if you're going to finish strong, period, you got to be alert and ready. You got to know the power of fortitude and the power of focus. Some of us can't get what we need because we lack the power of focus. Anything derails us. You can say, well, you know what? It's a new me. I'm going to church. I'm going to listen to this word. I'm going to get what I need. And soon as one of the, I won't, I'm going to call him a demon or a devil, but the ones you perceive a demon or a devil say something wrong or look at you wrong, your whole service is now messed up. Why? Because you're not focused. That's why y'all think your pastor deaf, dumb, and stupid. I'm not deaf, dumb, and stupid. I just don't focus on what y'all focus on. And you want me to focus on what you focus on. How dumb is that? Then I should not be your leader. I should be leading you to better focus, not a lack of focus. And so instead of getting mad because I don't see what you see, you ought to say, thank God for my pastor staying focused and trying to keep me focused. Because if he don't keep me focused, I've been here fussing, fighting, and cussing. Yeah, some of y'all get aggra- I say, man, well, stop focusing on that. That ain't nothing to focus on. But y'all get aggravated. I'm doing this, and you... I'm, I'm identifying the tricks of the enemy. And you want me to subscribe to how you feel instead of subscribing to keeping you focused. You want me to pat you and rub you Spiritually rub you. Pat you. Rub you. Cater to you. When you want the wrong thing. And when you're seeing the wrong thing. When your focus, your lack of focus is destroying you and distorting your view. But you want me to endorse that. And if I don't endorse that, I'm a bad pastor. Well, so be it. If loving you is wrong. The reason I do it because I love you. Y'all ain't getting this. If loving you is wrong, then pastor don't want to be right. The, the, sheep, the shepherd that don't love you will allow you to be overtaken with how you feel and what you think. But the shepherd that love you will say, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. You're seeing that wrong. And you got to have enough humility to know that sometimes you can be wrong. That's the problem. Some of us don't think we, we know everything. We got everything right. And we no, no. Sometimes you can be wrong. It's true, it's true. We all can be wrong. Somebody say the power of fortitude. Y'all don't let me go over. Somebody say the power of focus. They went from 32,000 to 22,000. Hmm? To 10,000. Hmm? 9,700 was not focused. And now we're down to 300. We're down to 300 from 32,000. Here, here's the power of faith. You got the power of fortitude, the power of focus, the power of faith. Unless I hold you too long. The power of faith. The Lord said in the seventh verse unto Gideon, by 300 men that lap will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thy hand and let all the other people go every man unto his own place. The mission Gideon had been called to do was impossible with man. 
Y'all missed it. If you're looking at it from the natural eye, this is an impossible feat. 300 is going to defeat 135,000. Somebody look at somebody. I'm going to look at it with attitude. No, look at somebody with attitude and tell them these words. If God be for me, who can be against me? Goes from 32,300. God knew if Gideon had a large army. I want y'all to hear this good. You may not get no hooping and hollering today. If God knew if Gideon had a large army, they would believe they had beaten the Midianites. Here's a question. Y'all ain't going to like it. Here's a question. Look at the name and say, I'm not going to like this. What is it in your life that God is refusing to give you too much of? Because if he gave it to you, you would think it was all about you. I'm going to step back and kiss myself on that. Maybe you don't have a lot of money because he know how you will act with a lot of money. I think Proverbs say a fool and his money will soon depart. You don't know what you're doing with it. Maybe you don't have a lot of education because if you did, you would beat people up with it. What is it that God is liquidating? Because he can't trust you with it. Why you can't get what you want? Because if you got it, you wouldn't give God the glory for it. And so God, this thing, this thing shouted at me when he gave it to me. God will show you that you don't need a bank full of money to be taken care of. Y'all missed it. I know this to be a fact. God has shown me through the years, I don't have to have a whole bank full of money to gain weight and lose weight and switch out cars and out a motorcycle. I don't need a whole bank full of money because what God has for me is for me. And I don't have to drive myself crazy trying to keep, keep up with the Joneses and I don't know what the Joneses is doing to get it. So when people get new things, I don't get mad. I get happy. I rejoice with them because I know y'all ain't helping me. Some of y'all get jealous. Some of y'all get mad. Some of y'all get upset. When God does things for other people, I congratulate because I know I'm next in line for my miracle. When I know I didn't do it, God did it. Look at somebody and say, who did it? God did it. Because if the truth be told, these 300 men are not enough. There's no match for the Midianites. Gideon was going to have to rely on the Lord. Y'all not going to like this, but I'm going to say it. Sometimes we don't have money because he wants us to rely on him. <laughs> Every month, I got the same bills. And less money. But God makes a way. Let me come over here, y'all. I, I ain't talking to you, Blocker. I know you got money. Every month, every month, I have to rely on God. When my money is funny and my change is strange, I can't call my father in law. I got to call the father. 
He didn't give me a father-in-law for that. Gave me the father to depend on him. Because guess what? Don't tell the church I'm going to tell you. Because the same man got me, it's the same man got blocker. We got the same man. Many times we face situations that are beyond our control. We tend to worry about the outcome. Can you help me preach this? Say your outlook will determine your outcome. It's not what you go through, but it's how you go through what you go through. Can you tell it to somebody? It's not what I go through, but it's how I go through what I go through. If I don't have a good outlook, then I will never have a good outcome. I know I'm behind. I'm, I know I'm outnumbered. But if God be for me, we tend to worry about the outcome. A lack of faith will hinder our progress in the work God has called us to perform. The work we are responsible for is overwhelming. Can I say that again? I'm not telling you church is easy. I'm not telling you ministry is easy. There's a, there's a level of misery with ministry. I'm telling you, amen, there's power in fortitude. There's power in focus. And there's power in faith. That's what I'm telling you. You can make it even in this church if you had some fortitude, if you had some focus, and if you had some faith. I'm not saying it's easy dealing with us. It ain't easy dealing with the brown complected people. But it's not impossible. We would never accomplish it without the Lord's help. I'll never let no huh, hmm, hmm, body, I'm trying to be spiritual, stop me from coming to church. And that's from, the, that's from the preacher to the back door. Ain't no preacher going to stop me from coming to church. Nobody in here can stop me from loving God. Nobody in here can challenge my faith, my focus, my fortitude. I'm too sold out for that. Go play with somebody else. Look at your neighbor and say, go play with somebody else because I'm, I'm too focused. I got faith. I got fortitude. You ain't going to get me out of here because you don't like me. There's a lot of folk that don't like me. Take a number. Get in line. We need to develop a faith like Gideon. March confidently into battle and trust the Lord to give us the victory. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm trusting in God to give me the victory. I know I'm outnumbered. I know I'm behind. I know I'm overwhelmed. I know I got assumptions and apprehensions and anxiety, but I'm trusting God, amen, to give me the victory. I know, I know I got trust issues, but I'm trusting God to give me the victory because if I can't trace him or trail him or track him, the least I can do is trust him. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, stop trying to trace trail and track. All God wants you to do is trust him. Without faith, we will accomplish very little. But through faith, we can accomplish so much more. Adrian Rogers said it like this. Victory is not achieved by fighting. See, some of y'all thought that. Victory is not achieved by fighting. Victory is not achieved by fighting, but victory is achieved by faith. Faith is not believing that God can do something. Faith is knowing that he can do all things. God is not who you think he is. God is who he says. Yes. Let me go. I see. I don't, I don't, I don't stay too long. Here it is. Finish strong part two. Finish strong part two. Notice Gideon's anxiety, his apprehension, his assumption. But notice in chapter seven, the power of fortitude. Some, stop looking at the people that left. 
Thank God for the people that stand. The power of focus. Don't go to battle with people that's more concerned about luxury and being comfortable over being courageous. I don't want to go to battle with people ain't alert. I'm in a foxhole with you and you on the phone texting. I'm in the foxhole with you. How you going to win? And you can't stay focused. Go to a restaurant. Go to a restaurant today and do this homework. When you get to that restaurant, look at the people sitting at the table. They're not talking to each other. They're not interacting with each other. Everybody got a phone in their hand. They head down, and they're doing something else. The power of faith. Gideon finally believed. I'm going, y'all. Ain't going to be no hooping and high. Gideon finally believed that he can win with just 300. When you going to realize, don't tell the church up when I say this, that you can win with what you have. Thank you, preacher. I'm going to say it one more time. When are you going to realize you can win with what you have? Stop getting depressed over what you don't have when you can get the victory with what you do have. Y'all don't even know the freedom you just got from that statement. Amen. Many of us are not winning because we don't believe we can win with what we have. So we're trying to get more. Trying to get something different. When God said, you don't even need what you think you need. You already have what you need to win with. Faith is not believing that God can do something. Faith is knowing that he can and he will. Finish strong part two. Father God, we thank you now for this word. Thank you for the power of fortitude, the power of focus, the power of faith. God, I know I could finish strong. I know it's the middle of November, but I'm not giving up. I'm not throwing in a white towel. You just encourage me, Father, that I can win with what I have. And I'm going to do just that. I'm going to finish strong with what I have. I realize contentment is not getting everything I want, but it's wanting what I already have. I've learned how to be full. I learned how to be empty. I learned how to have, and I learned how not to have. I've learned whatever state I'm in, whatever condition I'm in, whatever situation I'm in, I learned how to be content and to be grateful and faithful for what you have left me with. I'm tired of whining and complaining what have been taken from me. I'm going to celebrate what I have. Because what I have when I put it with you is more than enough. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Give God a hand clap of praise. This concludes our streaming. We pray that something was said. Amen. We pray something was said to encourage you to run on to see what the end will be.